Welcome to the Royal Tax Podcast with your hosts, Megan Templeton, Royal Legal Solutions Consulting Attorney, and Royal Legal Solutions CPA, MBA, and CFO, Pete Shindley. Each week, they talk about how to take your tax and financial strategy to the next level and learn how to build and scale your real estate investing business in a way that maximizes your returns and minimizes your taxes. This is for informational use only. For direct questions, please contact us or your local tax CPA accountant. Well, welcome guys. So I hope everyone is doing well. I see a couple new faces. So welcome. This is our Royal Tax Show. Um, each week where we bring you either a special guest, a tax topic, or we do a Q&A type function. Um, now today is going to look a little bit different. Our uh, typical resident, he is our CPA, our CFO, and the one who typically leads these calls, Pete Schindel, is actually going to be out today, um, you know, with tax deadline being recently. He is a little bit overwhelmed and so he's getting some projects wrapped up there, but he'll be back with us next week. So with that being said, I think it's going to be a little different format today. Um, what the way we typically do it, if you're new, is that we will come in, do a quick introduction, and then go into breakout groups. After those breakout groups, we go into a quick two to three minute recap, and then we have a presentation. Um, and then sometimes we go back into a breakout group. And then today, I think we're going to do that initial breakout group just to give you guys a chance to connect and start floating the topic today. And then we'll come back into really just a broad group conversation. So there's not necessarily a presentation today. What Pete has uh, lined up for us is one of us to just chat about apps that are useful for you as real estate investors um, or alternative asset investors, particularly based around the idea of bookkeeping and tax. Um, and so he's got me a he sent me a list of a couple who wants me to float, but really want this to be a collaborative type session where I hear from you guys of what works well for you, what doesn't, um, what areas do you need help in so we can go and look for those apps for you. Um, so that's what we'll do. Now, these shows are recorded. I want to remind everybody of that. So, you know, inside of that, if your anonymity is important for, to you inside of these shows, you can turn your camera off, change your name. You're welcome to do whatever's best for you. We host these uh, viewings on our Wistia channel, so you can go back and rewatch them or share them with your network if it's something that you think would be useful to them. Uh, so with that being said, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and roll into breakout groups today. So for the breakouts, what we do is just kind of a quick introduction, you know, here's who you are, what you invest in, how long you've been doing it. And then just let's start floating this idea of the topic of different apps that work well for you. So we can start getting everybody aligned with some of the options available. And then we will come back. We'll do that quick recap um, where it'll really just be more setting us up for the general conversation. So just come back in with the mindset of what apps have you used? Are there new apps you just learned about? You want to have a greater discussion about and see if other people are using it, that kind of thing. Um, okay, so first app that Pete suggested is Appfolio. Has anyone used it? Do I have you then when talking? Yes, I've used it. I mean, you, you had a wealth of experience, Chris. I mean, yes, please talk. Uh, did you like it? Um, so mine is more indirect. Um, I have, uh, for my Tampa uh, properties, I have a property manager who uses Appfolio, and then I get the reports from him. That uh, and yeah, that, that connects with Stessa. But I don't have that, you know, direct experience with it, with the exception of getting the reports for it. Okay, cool. And Pete noted that that's kind of one of the more heavier ones. Um, so it might not be it's great. It sounds like, it, yeah, I feel like a property manager makes sense. Um, next one you mentioned is Stessa. I use Stessa. I really like it. Um, just wanted to flag it for folks. A couple things to know about Stessa. You know, it's 100% free, which is, you know, why I love it. Um, and I think it's set up really well. It's intuitive. But, you know, some folks want something a little bit more robust. It might not be a great fit for you, but wanted to flag that as a good one for you. Um Megan, I, I, I like that one too. I, I don't like that you can't manipulate the categories. I, yeah. I find that exceptionally irritating. Mm -hmm. I, I find it irritating that I can't add like uh, tags, uh, but, yeah. uh, and, and not changing the categories can make it very limiting as well. But what I really like about it, it is the only software program I found that could connect with Appfolio and um, uh, Propertyware. Which usually, if you have a, a somebody who's a manager who's managing your property, that's the kind of reports they get, and it it directly ties into it. Not, not that you can download the information, but like literally auto download, like you can with the bank statement. It's the only one that I have found, uh, and that that it's free makes it even better. Um, so, yeah. I, I've played with it a bit, but it, it just didn't seem to have the feature set that would work for me. Uh, the, the static categories is, is a big issue for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Brendan, what do you use? I feel like your operations are always pretty tight. What's your recommendation? Uh, I'm using QuickBooks okay. for for our accounting stuff, and then um, then a collection of uh, spreadsheets and and kind of our our own constructions that we we keep in in Google Docs. Um, we we use Trello a bit, but um, we we haven't been. Um, real disciplined about using it on a daily basis. So it's, it's better for like tracking longer term tasks. That's interesting. I use Trello a good bit for my law firm, um, but I've never used it in a, a real estate investing capacity, but I can see the uses for it. Um, if you're not familiar with Trello guys, it's one that gives you boards and you can create different tasks and you can move them from spot to spot as you go along the task progress. Um, it's great for me. And, and the, they've got an app that's really intuitive as well, but um, interesting. I'll have to think about using Trello because that's probably, now that you've said that, there's some ways I think I can incorporate it into my investing stuff. I'm not familiar um, with Trello. Is it, uh, is it free? There is a free version, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is free. There's, there's add-ons that, uh, that you can purchase. Um, but it's, it's basically a, a Kanban board, if you're familiar with, um, with the Kanban Agile methodology. Um, what works for us is to have different boards for each property and, um, you know, keep keep tasks there and you can prioritize things or, you know, move them up or down. Um, and then we have some that are, are broader, like, you know, um, ensure uh, all the properties have complied with the fire extinguisher recall is, is one that we have. It's kind of a long-term thing because we, we check those when, when a tenant moves out or if we do a mid-year inspection. So um it's, it's good for us for tracking longer term tasks that, you know, may exceed what's, what's in your, in your stack for the day. How do you spell Trello? T-R-E. Sorry. Go ahead, Brendan. T-R-E-L-L-O. Okay. Thank you. And it's owned by Atlassian now, if that means anything to you. On the subject of software like this, uh, I'm looking for something that's a good way to keep track of my time. It's not, I don't want something that actually measures live the time. I don't want to start and stop a clock. I want to do like a law firm billing or something. I want at the end of the day to go back and say, I spent this much time on that company and this much time on the properties and things like that. Anybody? Well, let me ask you, um, is this because of a professional status or is there some reason that you want it to do that? Well, professional status would certainly be a big help for it. But is that your sole reason though? Or is this, I, I'm just purely curious if you don't mind sharing. Um, it's the, I'd say it's about 75% of the reason. Okay. Typically, I'd want something more like that just because if I had paid employees that were paid on an hourly basis, I'd want to be able to. Yeah, do. well, and I did for many years. I had a consulting firm and I did it that way. And then I kind of got out of the habit. Um, and now I need to get back in. And I looked at a bunch of different softwares. I have Clockify on my machine, but, you know, it's got, it's forcing you into a particular pattern, which is not, doesn't happen to fit what I do. Yeah. I, I tend to avoid those because I, I, I say I have such great uh, quality of life because I have <laughs> what I want to do. And if I was actually tracking how much time I was spending on real estate. You might be embarrassed oh, sometimes. Yes, I right. have to think. <laughs> right. Well, I will say I used to use something called Timular. Um, and they've got an online app for it, but they also sell this little mechanism where you flip it and it changes changes what activity you're doing at logs. And I know you're not looking for that. And so that's kind of where I hit is I didn't want to use some type of stop start process thing. Yeah. I went back to Google. I went to a Google Excel spreadsheet. I think it's just easier for me <laughs> yeah. to manually log in. I never yeah, found a good right. solution, but if anyone has one. There's got to be. I mean, accountants, attorneys, anybody yeah. who does flowers has to have this kind of. Uh, I, st I stayed with paper long after your computers came in just because it's so much easier. You can keep it on a piece of paper, carry that around, get it typed in once, once a week or something. Yeah. Now there's a bunch of attorney softwares that do it. They can't really be cross used across professions. I'll ask Pete about if there's any CPA ones that could be used. Yeah. Um, 
like I I use Clio. I know that I mean I use Clio for my Clio? Law firm, but like yeah, but I don't think you'll be able to use it for anything outside of legal field. But uh, spreadsheets the best way I found to do it for real estate and, stuff. Uh, Excel wins again. <laughs> that's, that's what we use. Uh, we use a, a Google Docs um, spreadsheet. You know, it's it's in the cloud, so you can access the same sheet. Right. From you can do it from your phone computer or phone or tablet or whatever you're on. Right. Yeah, if you're out somewhere, you can go in and put on a, a line. And I I wrote a little um, Google form that uh, you know takes just a couple pieces of data and. So my wife has that on her phone. It's real easy for her to just uh, type something in and it, it dumps it into the spreadsheet. So that's, that's free. Um, you know, I, I just finished working with, with it for last year because we use it for time and um, mileage. So it tracks, you know, which vehicle we use to, to do, um, to work on which business or which property. Right. And um and then the calculations from that go in into my Schedule E or Schedule C at the end of the year. Hey, Brendan or, or, or anybody else, does, I, I'm searching for something that uh, can track receipts, you know, something where you have a mobile phone, you take a picture of it. And I mean, ideally, it has some kind of OCR function where it can pull the relevant information out of it. Uh, and, you know, preferably with something that's cloud-based, you know, that automatically uploads it. And I'm trying to make things easy for my guy in Hawaii, you know, who's really great at fixing flipping, but not as great at, at uh, managing uh, the expense of <laughs> keeping track of everything. I um, have one I like. Emails with, with the, like, picture attachments, and it's just a mess. So I'd love him to have a piece of software. He picks it, you know, takes a picture of it, it uploads it, and puts it in the, in the right place. Take a look. Take a look at one called Verify. It has an odd spelling. It's V E R Y F I, um, and I've used that. The OCR is good. It it gets it right most of the time. And Are you? It has, it has it's it has some smarts so that it can put it to your projects that it knows you're doing. I you know I have about a half a dozen projects, and it's smart enough to get get it most of the time. But it's fifteen dollars a month, um, and I use well. I mean, it's one hundred and eighty dollars a year, and it takes care of a lot of pieces of paper. <laughs> for for me, that's worth it. Yeah, Expensify is another one, Chris, to check out. I've used Expensify in the past. Now I haven't used it recently. Um, I know there's somebody at RLS who talks about using QuickBooks a lot for that. Now I don't know what the functionality on that looks like. I've never no, used no, it, no. but something to look at. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, wasn't Verify the one that used to have the receipt tracker and now does not? Paul, have you used it recently? Do you still use it? I mean, is it? Yeah, I haven't I haven't had occasion to lately, but did it drop that? Well, I, I, I I, one of the well. ones that was highly recommended, I went and then I read the review saying, you know, really pissed that they dropped it. And I could swear it was Verify. But well, uh, I'll try it right now. <laughs> okay, I haven't taken a receipt lately. Um, I used to use something called Cam Scanner. Um, I haven't used it in a couple of years, um, but it it was, as I recall, um, you know, fairly uh, easy to use and and quick for doing receipts. Um, frankly, what I do a lot of the time now is I'll just snap a picture with my phone, and you know, you can probably guess what I do with it. I open, I upload it to Google Docs. And, um, you know, it's, it's not a very, um, it's not a very end to end elegant solution, but with the, with the volume that I have, it's adequate and I don't have to pay anything for it or learn something new. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I even that would just be so much better than what I've got him doing right now. So, yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. I didn't mean to hijack, uh, it still okay, works. Verify yeah. still works. Okay. Thank you. Fifteen dollars a month. And look, I don't mind paying for a service that I know is useful, but when it's got a bunch of competitors that offer a free uh, you know, offer it for free, I, I tend to try that first. Well, I tried several of them and said it's decided I'd rather pay than, than 
what put up with some of the idiosyncrasies. Every software has some idiosyncrasies and a learning curve. True. And this one sort of fit my habits of thought. Thank you. Appreciate it, Paul. Keep in mind that any piece of software is going to be monetized somehow eventually. Yeah. So they're either going to get you um, hooked on it and grow the user base and then charge a subscription. They're going to grow the user base and then sell out to a, a competitor, uh, add pricey tiers, or... I don't know how you get the basic yeah. bones from a lot of these things. And if you want some of the more premier functions, you, you got to pay for it. I'm yeah. okay with that. Or, you know, like with uh, Hawaii's, it's still kind of a startup over there. If it grows to what I'm expecting, uh, then I don't mind making, you know, the payments on it. But right now where it's, you know, we got like two houses going at a time, you know, uh, sometimes just one. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting until, you know, once I've got like 10 at a time within, then I don't care about $15 a month kind of expenses. But right now it's... 15 it not, for it to make sense it was not so, 50 it was 15 one five. 15. yeah okay but, uh, i know that uh having worked in in silicon valley i what what had we had at our company was i had an american express card that whenever i charged to it, it automatically showed up in an expense tracking system and while you guys were talking i've also used expensify before i switched over to that and it used to be free it looks like they have their own card and they might have adopted this similar model and it looks like if you use their card and then uh, it, then it all automatically shows up, but it's like $5 a month, I think something like that now. So it might be worth Does the actual at. receipt show up too. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, what happens is the actual electronic transaction shows up in a system when you're using their card because it's all synced up. But if I'm you just... want to, if you want to do it without their card, then what I used to use, you take a picture of it, it does OCR and then it uploads it automatically and you categorize it. So Right. Uh, there's a bunch of those things out there. I mean, that pop, there's a, probably a few options. Right. I mean, right now we're just using the debit card for the specific uh, bank account for that business. And yep. so transactions show up and I don't have a corresponding receipt. Okay. With the exception of where most of our uh, expenses come from is Home Depot. And if you guys don't know, it's free to set up a pro account over there. And it will, you can get CVS files to your heart's content with all the receipts and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's covered. It's, it's the other smaller purchases. And it's like, oh, yeah, I remember paying for that, but don't know where it is. And I trust the guy. It's not a fraud situation. It's more of a prevention of, you know, if there's an audit, you know, I want to make sure that we have all our ducks in a row. Sure. <clears throat> Well, guys, I was going to walk through this list that Pete's never, but I don't know that that's going to be super helpful. So why don't we do this? Are there any apps that you've used that have really changed your business model that you want to recommend to folks? Or are there any gaps in your processes that you're looking for some type of software for? And maybe we can do kind of a group mind around that. So for me, I will say I use something called Shift, and this is not necessarily related to expense track or anything, but I started using Shift because I've got about eight to nine at a time different email accounts I have to manage. Um, and I like having them all in one place along with all of my various slacks that I'm involved in. And so that just puts all my accounts in one view, one screen. And there's a lot of softwares that do it. But so Shift for me was the big one that really changed my business operations that I would recommend for folks. So Again, you know, uh, yeah. Now, what you're just saying is that you, you input all your different emails and it just brings them all together in one place? So it looks like, so it, not necessarily into one inbox, but I'll have a tab just along the left-hand side that's got every one of my inbox, just kind of a little icon for it, and it'll show me when I've got a new alert for it. Um, is there any different, I mean, you are you in the whole Apple ecosystem? I mean, do you have an iPhone? I do, yeah. So I've got an iPhone, MacBook, all that kind of stuff. Okay. And, and, and so I guess what I'm trying to figure out is because, you know, their own email system does the same thing. I've got like three different emails and it all goes into the Apple inbox and I can have it either list just a specific email or all the email and see all of it coming in. Uh, I, I'm not trying to challenge you, but I mean, is it, I mean, that one's free. Is this one any, do you find any benefit out of Slack as compared to that or? Yeah, the Apple one, I mean, the Apple one works for my phone great. Um, and the, if I'm using my Apple, like if I'm looking at my Apple mail on my computer, it's fine, but that's not the way that my systems typically work. Um, I like to work 
outside. I like to be able to see my slacks and everything at the same time. So essentially any notification I'm going to get about my workday is now inside of one screen. So it's not just holding my emails. It's also holding all my chat channels, all of my appointment setting channels, things like that. And so for me, it was more integrative than having to flip back and forth between the various platforms and things. What's it called? It's called Shift. S-H-I-F-T. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, one that Pete flagged that was really instrumental for him and said in here is that he's got Buildium, which I've used Buildium before. I think it's great. If you haven't checked it out, it's something to look at for sure. Um, Buildium is, I mean, that is the predominant one that it's like every partner I have, we use a different software program. And, and the one that I have the most properties with is Buildium. And I would recommend if you've got more than a dozen properties, you're going to do yourself a great service by going to a more robust program like Buildium because it really takes care of just about all of our needs, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you are. It, well, let me rephrase that. If you have over 12 that you manage yourself or you have internal management, I would recommend a system like that. It's worked out really great for us. If you already have a property manager, a third party property manager, it's, it's probably unnecessary to go in that direction. Want more information? Join our community groups that exist to provide a space for like-minded people on a similar journey to learn, share, and network with real estate investing professionals and entrepreneurs. We meet weekly for an hour in Zoom to offer knowledge and accountability. Be sure to grab the link in our show notes. Yep. Uh, here's a question for you, Chris. If, if I have my own Buildium uh, setup, can it import stuff from a, a different property manager's uh, Buildium account. Because I, I have some PMs I work with that use Buildium, but uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a manual process for me to reconcile their, their ledgers with my, my QuickBooks one. And uh, I've, I've kind of thought about Buildium for myself, but wouldn't want to be in a situation where I'm manually moving stuff from one to the other. Yeah, I um, I think the direct. If I'm going to give you a direct answer, it's no. <laughs> uh, the, the indirect answer is, I mean, I mean, you know, you can you can import. They, they have great import functions, so you could export from that and import into the other. But I try to do yeah. the same thing. It's like I'm already paying for Buildium, you know, with you know a whole bunch of properties in Columbus. Um, why do I have to pay for a whole nother Buildium? to incorporate my Florida one. Now I wouldn't have to if I was the only investor, I could just do it all in there, but I don't necessarily want my Columbus guy to see my Tampa stuff. Um, right. or, or more importantly, not that I don't trust him, but I don't want it to cross and get complicated. And I haven't seen a way to do that. So I, I'm not trying to do exactly what you're doing, but it's kind of the same functionality. Um, and unfortunately I, I don't, I haven't seen it. All right, thanks for your feedback. All right, guys, any other apps or software recommendations, needs, anything we want to chat about? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to make one other comment, too, because if I'm going to, you know, I have a number of different businesses I work with, but some are more, you know, quote unquote, passive, like the rentals. And then you have the other, which is like my lending business, fix and flips and all that. That's a lot more active um, for active businesses. I know most people use something like QuickBooks. Um, but I made a change a number of years ago from QuickBooks um, over to a product called Xero, X-E-R-O. And it is, I find it is so much more user friendly than QuickBooks. Uh, it's, it's so much less expensive than QuickBooks um, and has all the same functionality I, I found. Um, so uh, it's, uh, I, I've gotten a lot of use out of that. And to your point too, uh, Brendan, I mean, I am able to actually do multiple businesses out of one platform with that, uh, which has been great. I've looked at it before, but uh, but haven't made the switch to QuickBooks. Maybe I'll do it someday. Give it a look only because I find it to be, I, I look, anytime we're used to a specific software program, we don't like to move away from it because it's something new. All I can tell you is that if you get sick of paying, I mean, because I think QuickBooks is more expensive than it really needs to be. And it, it does it because it's the name recognition and because they can. But uh, I, I find it is so much easier to use and the functionality is all there. And you can easily transport it over. So, so how, do you, how do you find it works, Chris, with uh, like uh, 
for properties, you know, um, just the property portfolio? Do you have to sort of make that fit into the properties or is it set up? Well, again, I don't use it for, for rentals. I just, yeah, it's at all. robust. And I mean, it just doesn't have the same functionality. I mean, look, if you only had a few properties, yeah, it's no problem. I mean, you can set up classes and all that like you can do with QuickBooks. Uh, and, and you certainly could use it for, I mean, look, people use QuickBooks for rentals. Um, I'm, um, Actually, we're using QuickBooks for rentals in, in Tampa, you know, against my better judgment. Um, but we're we're at 12 properties now and we're still growing. So it's getting to the point. Well, over there, we have a bookkeeper who does all the bookkeeping and she is really wants us to stay with QuickBooks. So I probably will. But I still need to make changes because she sets all the properties up as customers and it's just or as projects. It just doesn't work in the way I want it to. So look, you can manipulate any, well, any software program as robust as QuickBooks, you can manipulate it to for your needs. But I just, why do that when you have others that are less expensive, like Buildium, uh, and give you more functionality, specific to rent uh, to rentals, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Hey guys, Ken just dropped a list. My, my own, own little um, caveat is that I, I want something that's on-prem. Um, and that's just because I'm kind of kind of paranoid about stuff in the cloud. Uh, but uh, that's, that is a constraint for me. And I don't want to discourage people from using cloud-based stuff. It's just something about me that, uh, that resists that. So that's one of the major reasons I use QuickBooks locally. Yeah, I, I don't really have much of a choice since everything I do is out of state. Uh, it just wouldn't work for me if I and I have partners, so it's like everybody has to have interface to it. Uh, quick question for you, Brendan. So you use QuickBooks offline, uh, and then maybe do throw backups. Oh, you probably do backups uh, at home on, on your own server or something instead of putting up in the cloud. Is that it? Yeah. Got it. Um, do they still offer QuickBooks offline? Uh, yes, it's called uh, Enterprise Desktop or something like that. It's it's the redheaded stepchild. You know, they they don't want uh, to be, um, you know, they don't want people to be using it. The uh, subscription model is much more lucrative for them. Um, but it's so get bugged like yeah. every two years, like you have to upgrade it and you're not going to have the same functionality anymore. Because that's what I hated about the, the offline one, that and the mix up of the backups and everything. But Yeah, I, I haven't found any restrictions in, in the functionality, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, a, it's, it's a, a clunkier, you know, uh, clunkier old, old timey interface. And such, it, it doesn't have the 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 polish that a, a web based app does, which is okay with me. Uh, yeah, I do what's right for you, man. And if you can't sleep at night because things up in the cloud, I, I, I get it. Um, yeah. All right, guys. So I wanted to point out, Ken has dropped the list of the various softwares we talked about over in the chat. So if you uh, want to take a look at any of those, they're there for you. <clears throat> uh, a couple things I wanted to note before we wrap up here. So we've got some new shows. Let me get the calendar pulled back up. Uh, so tomorrow we are going to have, if you, if you could do the Real Investing Show, we've got Ron Galloway coming on. He's talking about um, a new thing we're going to be rolling out here at RLS. It's a fun type event. And so I think it's going to be uh, really interesting. Scott's going to be hosting that one for us tomorrow. And so, you know, highly recommend checking that out. I think there's going to be a lot of information and some opportunities for you guys. And then tomorrow night, we are launching a new show. So Scott and our COO, Gina, are going to be hosting a new show called Royal Time and Money. And so that's going to be on Wednesdays from 4.30 Eastern to 6. So highly recommend checking that out. If you've done Royal Life at all, it's going to have a little bit of a similar vibe, but there's going to be some new techniques and some new processes talked about. Um, but you, from that, from Royal Life, you can kind of get a vibe for what uh, how Gina and Scott interact. And there's, a, there's a lot of value that just comes out from the general conversation. So definitely recommend checking that out. Um, I'm not sure if that's one we're recording or not. I'll have to check and get back to you guys on that. But so that one will be tomorrow night. And then next week on Royal Tax, Pete will be back and we'll start talking about cost segregation again. Um, so 
be here for that one. Any questions you have in advance of that, feel free to send them over. We'll do a pretty heavy Q&A on that one as well. Um, trying to think what other updates I've got for you. Discord channels, they're still there. Hop in as much as you want. Would love to see some engagement inside of those and get some more conversations going with folks. Um, check out the shows we're at. All of these shows are hosted on West Steel. Like I said, if you ever have trouble finding a recording or anything, let us know. We can pull it for you. Um, and it looks like Liz is also posting um, our royal tax links for, for information about our tax processes we have. So I know, you know, Pete's doing these shows for you guys, but he also does individual consults. So we've got uh, programs you can get involved with for tax savings and things with us. So definitely hit up Pete and check out the links that Liz is dropping now. Um, well, we've got about 13 minutes left, guys. If there's any other questions, you know, we can keep it open, do general conversation, answer any questions we have, or we can close it out early. Um, so are there any questions for me? Anything I can feel for guys? It doesn't have to be tax related. It can be RLS related or whatever it may be. Megan, did you have any other apps on your list to discuss or is that, is that all the ones that, that Ken list is kind of there? I'm trying to make sure. I don't want to bring any that I don't think are high value. Some of these I don't know that. Or just even if you don't know, I just, uh, I'm just Let's curious. See. The other ones that Pete had listed that I've never used are Avail, which I, I don't know anything about. What's that like, Megan? Tell me everything. Yeah, I, well, I'm, kidding, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's named Avail. That's what I got for you. you um, it looks like it's, uh, Pete's overview says it's built specifically for DIY, DIY landlords to help find tenants, view credit history, et cetera. So it's more of a placement type of pro software. Um, and relatedly, he's got Turbo Tenant listed, which I have had RLS clients who have used and really liked it. Um, it's free for landlords. Uh, so Turbo Tenant would probably be the one I would check out before Avail, which looks like it's paid for process. Uh, we've got Rentometer. I don't know anything about that one. But it is so I do. Um, yeah. it's, it's basically data collection. Um, you know, it scrapes rental listings uh, all over the country and then does analysis of um, market prices in different regions. So it's, um, you know, so it's, it's a useful tool for helping you price a unit as you bring it online to the market. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I have a subscription too, and I forget, it's not that expensive, hundred bucks a year and it allows you to get market prices for apartments or whatever. What would the going rate be for a two bedroom, two bath? It shows trends and I don't know, I think for a hundred bucks, you get like a hundred analysis, you know, with details about comps in the area, you know, um, uh, specific addresses and rent requests and things like that. So I, I find it a valuable tool. But I pronounce it rentometer. I don't know. Maybe it's rentometer. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna roll with rentometer because that sounds a whole lot better. So let's do that. I don't know. Welcome to Southern Alabama, where we don't entirely know how to pronounce things off the bat here. Um, and the rest. Yeah, of maybe guys, it's a Californian pronunciation. Yeah, we just let you know stuff roll off of the, and we make words up too. So you know, I would defer to the California stuff. Uh. <laughs> um, the only other apps Pete had mentioned were budgeting apps, which I know we talked about that a good bit a couple of sessions ago. But um, you know, for budgeting, I use Pocket Guard a lot personally. I think it's a good one. Mint is one that I think is somewhat overhyped, but people love it. Um, but does anybody have a budgeting app they love? They want to recommend, or one that they're like absolutely not stay away from it. Excel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would just make a little bit of a warning here. If you do use Mint, just be aware that uh, with some things that uh, you connect with some bank accounts or some credit cards, if you don't log on regularly, uh, there's no way to bulk edit it. So if you don't log on for three months uh, or four months and uh, it will only do the last three months of data on a particular bank account or, or credit card, there's no way to bulk add that back into Mint. Uh, you can only, the only ads you can do are one line at a time, uh, which was really a bummer uh, when I was trying to, uh, uh, you know, when I wasn't paying attention to it for a few months. What do you use instead? What do you what use instead? Uh -huh. I didn't. I just, you know, I, it, it wasn't for business. It was just for personal stuff. And, and I predominantly, if I'm being really honest, it's just if I need to, uh, you know, end of the year, I want to track how much I spent on gardening. I just, you know, I could put gardening in there and download it all. And I get all my gardener bills all in one place. Right. So it, it wasn't a huge deal. Uh, it just, 
it's just more of an annoyance that I've got a few months of a specific, uh, you know, credit card that I don't have, you know, in there. It's annoying. So just a little warning if you do actually use it. But I, it's just not robust enough for me for actually most of my personal stuff. Uh, it has severe limitations. Uh, and if you've got multiple financial, you know, accounts and everything, and, um, you know, again, it's just one of those things that just like, you know, Stessify uh, or Stessa, there, there's just not a lot you can manipulate that I find or enough. Yeah, I've, I've had a similar experience with Mint. Um, Although it works well enough for my, my adult children who are just kind of starting out with living on their own and needing to keep a budget. Hey, Brendan, that's all in the cloud. You're telling me you're okay with all your personal expenses up in the cloud? Chris, why are you picking at people today, man? Come on now. I'm teasing. It's not picking. <laughs> Those are my children's personal expenses. Mine uh, are... So that's what you're here at. Uh, Quicken on, on a VM on my home server, so... I get it. I get it. Thanks for putting up with me, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Chris, I see that you're on our schedule for our ghost or our guest for Royal Investing coming up next month. You want to give a plug for that? Uh, nope, that was last month. And I already talked. I've got one Last away. week, I should say. Oh, JK, okay. But, um, oh, I mean, maybe you need to tell me something I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I need to get with you offline because I think I might have stuck my foot in my mouth for a second here. So. <laughs> Liz, I'm looking at the May calendar. If you're listening to this, seems like we might need to adjust it. Um, and again, so I'll, I'll save the best for last, right? I'm speaking specifically for myself. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, all these different tools, all these different formats, right? Um, all these different media at the end of the day is how do you organize all that information so you can get to it in a very smart way? As it turns out that there is a system out there that is non-linear file management system, whatever, you name it, right? You can put it under this application, which I have been using for years, and that's how I manage the myriad of things that I'm involved in. But it's more focused on relationships of information, and it can be embedded in one application where you, you could have multiple apps open on your desktop. But this system enables you to integrate all of the information. It's called the brain. And it literally functions like your brain. It's nonlinear. So what happens is whether you have it in the cloud, whether you have it in your desktop, whether you have it in your mobile app, or your laptop, right? At the end of the day is how does all this information relate? Whether it's financials, whether it's spreadsheets, whether it's contracts, whether it's agreements, whether it's specific to a project, whether it's about CRM, people and relationships. This particular application called the brain will enable you to connect those information in a very smart way. So I'm going to post this thing in the... Um, in the chat and you guys can check it out and it's worth a look. And because at the end of the day, we're always challenged about, you know, how do we manage all this information? If you're like me, I get hundreds of emails, but some of those are really important, especially if it, if it refers to a specific contract or some type of a case, I need to make sure that it gets put on the right project to the right people connected to it. Like Chris, I have multiple connections under Chris. I have multiple connections under Megan, not just under Roy Legal Solutions, all the different things that we do, just the way the human brain function, right? So it's not a linear way of organizing things, but the most important thing is you can also have this on your mobile app. So you can literally be on the go because it's so sophisticated that you can encrypt it, protect it, that when you need to share information, whether you're conducting a meeting or you're providing some proprietary information to a partner, what have you, with some sensitive information, you can also do that. It's called the brain. So it's worth a look. Take a look at it and you will, you will be uh, amazed of what it can do with all of these different tools that you use to manage all the information that goes on in our lives. Do you use the free one? Do you use, I see like there's four different... I, 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 I have the pro version because I've been using that for a long, long time, Chris. 
So but the pro version, which uh, with the licensed one, where it's just a one-time fee, or the one where try the try the free one first, check it out, and kind of get the idea. It's it really boils down to a really basic concept of the way we work with information and relationship. It has the main thought, and under it, it has called what they call a child series or child thought. And right to your side is your siblings, and right on top is your parent. And when you look at everything that you do in life, really connects that way. Unlike the regular filing system where it's hierarchical, it doesn't do that. It does it by connections, right? So, so Chris's project over in Hawaii or, or some other thing, right? There are people involved there. There are documents there. There are contracts there. There are financials there, right? And you can house it inside this brain and you can literally create that. And each of those thoughts can, can connect to other thoughts, and there are no limits to it. It literally functions like your brain. So I used the brain for a while, and I really liked it. And it, the benefits you're talking about are definitely there. I found an alternative version of it called Obsidian that I liked a little bit better. I dropped a link into it. It's a little more hacky. It's not, I don't know that it's, uh, I liked it because it was so hacky, and there's some ways I could get around it. But recommend checking out both. And I think Alex is definitely onto something using these softwares that do a lot of the brain mapping type software. It helped me be able to see my, uh, what do they call them? The essentially the trees of thought um, and how I would get to different things. So I was able to make more connections. And so it opened up a lot of opportunities for me. So I would definitely recommend checking out, you know, both of them, see what's a good fit for you. But thanks for flagging that, Alex. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call it for today. If nobody has any other questions, um, hope you guys enjoyed this. I know this is a different format than what we typically do. Um, thanks for your flexibility on it with Pete out today. But join us tomorrow. Um, like I said, I think it's going to be a really interesting topic. Ron's going to be there, which Ron's a hoot as always. If you've seen any of the other shows with Ron Galloway, Scott will be there talking about the fund. Um, and then, like I said, tomorrow night, there's the new show launching with Scott and Gina. I highly recommend as well. Um, so yeah, with that being said, guys, we'll leave the roof in a room open for a few more minutes if you want to connect with anybody, but I hope y'all have a great week and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully. Thanks everybody. Thank you for listening to the show today. If you're feeling overwhelmed with taxes as they relate to your real estate business and investments, or you're unsure if you're doing your accounting correctly, fill out our five minute quiz. With the information from this quiz, you'll schedule a meeting with a Royal Legal Solutions Advisor who will provide you with powerful tax saving strategies on your first call. Go to www.royallegalsolutions.com tax to fill it out.